I think to have a, a really good discussion, you really need to start from the beginning because if you start with a wrong um, supposition, you're going to end up with a wrong reason. Correct. I agree. Know, you know, at the end of the day. I so, agree. So, you know, you, you have um, evolutionists, you know, they believe in slow beginnings yeah. like and so forth. But a creationist have the same evidence just like evolutionists do, yeah. but the interpretation is different. And so I believe as a Christian and a Muslim, you will obviously have some. You will all, always have your understanding of where you're coming from in the Quran. I want to understand a little bit more, yeah. you know, um, your views. Yeah. As, as we talk, let's say creation, like, you know, um, because I, I know that there are some people who they believe in parts of creation, like, yes, God created. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Christians now, I don't know about Muslims. I mean, there are some Christians who believe that there was long periods in between the okay. days of creation. Okay. Right? Now, I don't believe in that. I believe in it, it was a, a literal six days. I don't know what Muslims believe on that. You know, um, and I'm not a person that reads too much to do with the Quran. I, I do know my Bible. Sure, sure. You know, I, 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 you know, so, from your perspective, what do you believe you know, in, in, in that sense? No, no, no. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you for your explanation. And, uh, and I agree with you. We should always have a good mutual discussion, um, understand each other's perspectives. And we're not here to win arguments. We're here to, you know, establish, because we're social beings. We want to learn each other, right? That's, that's the reason why, you know, we're, we're in the park. Some people, they have a wrong intention. They just want to be on the camera or they just want to win an argument, make themselves feel better. But however, you know, we, we're here to learn each other. So, you know, thank you for your explanation. I agree with you that, you know, there's one thing in common that we believe that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, correct? However, and I agree with you that we should always start from the foundation. Otherwise, if you don't, then it's going to lead to illogical conclusions. So we should we should always start by the foundation. And I think the best the best starting point that Muslims and Christians can do is is to talk about the concept of God. I mean, it's very important because uh, because that that's the difference between the, uh, that's the difference between you know someone who believes in God and someone who doesn't. Someone who believes in God, they believe that you know God revealed. Uh, you know his book to show us how to lead our life right atheists and agnostics you know they have subjective morality you know they believe that you know their own way is right their own way is wrong but we have objective morality morality right so your your objective morality is the bible my objective morality is the quran so the best thing we can do is we should start off with god because that's the most important right because you know god is the creator so from an islamic perspective we believe in uh, allah that allah Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth and there is a definition that is provided in the Quran which is you know uh, say he is Allah one and unique uniquely one Allah Allah the independent the self-sufficient meaning that everything depends upon him but he doesn't depend upon anything for his existence does that make sense yeah right? he doesn't give birth nor was he born yeah so god doesn't have a birthday right and god doesn't father children as well yeah and then there is nothing like unto him so this is the definition of allah what we believe in that allah is one he's unique he's self-sufficient he doesn't he wasn't born nor does he uh, father children and there's nothing like unto him so based upon that do you do you, so from a christian perspective do you believe in in, in trinity or are you unitarian christian well, all what you've just said, I yes. believe in up to all the points. As okay. Christians, I believe in that. I do believe in the Trinity. Okay. Obviously, I, I, I believe that our interpretation will be different when we talk about the word one. Yeah, instance, yeah. Right? that's where I want to discuss. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah. maybe we could look into that a little bit more and, sure. uh, and, and see your perspective yeah. and a Christian perspective. Because sure. I know that there are a lot of Christians in the park and they do have the wrong concept okay. of the Trinity. Sure. And, and I think they give some wrong information because they don't know the Bible as well as they should. Yeah. You know? So I'm not saying that I know it better than most of them, but I do believe that I understand the Trinity more sure. than most Christians that I hear. You know, and um, I, 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 I hear a lot of things. Okay, sure. So you so you mentioned that you know, you, you agree with the definition of Allah in the Quran. The difference is the interpretation of one. 
that's, what, that's, that's what you mentioned, correct. So if, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't want to make any straw man arguments or anything like that. You believe that the, fa uh, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, these are three different persons, but they're not three gods, they're one God, correct? They're three persons, yeah. Three. Okay, one God. Yeah. Now, based upon the definition, God is all powerful, God is all knowing, yeah? Because he has to be unique from the creation, right? Yeah. So we know that the creation, you know, we're not all knowing. We know some things, but we're ignorant. But you cannot attribute this to God, correct? Because God is all knowing, correct? So you, you also you also subscribe the happy static union, correct? So the, Jesus has two natures. He has the divine nature and the, the human nature, right? Now, from my perspective, and I, I want to see where you're coming from, I believe that this is what you call paradox. A paradox meaning that there's two conflicting um, statements that cannot be uh, cannot be reconciled. Because you know from the divine nature, God is all-knowing, correct? But human beings, as you believe Jesus was a man, correct? Jesus came, you believe Jesus is fully God and fully man, correct? Okay, now if you believe in the concept of hypostatic union, that Jesus has the divine nature and the human nature, then how can you reconcile for me that Jesus is all-knowing, but at the same time he's ignorant? Because when you read in Mark chapter 13 verse 32, Jesus, peace be upon him, he says that of that day knoweth no man, nor the angels, nor the Son, but only the Father knows the hour. So we believe that God is the only, uh, God is all-knowing and God cannot at, at any point in time be imperfect. But you know human beings are imperfect, correct? So, you, so, so God cannot be imperfect at any point in time. But Jesus, peace be upon him, since you believe that he was fully God and fully man, that means at one point Jesus is not absolute. In terms of the fact that he wasn't always all knowing. Yeah. Okay, let me just yeah. um, clarify something because most Christians, when we talk about his divinity and his, his humanity, now there are some Christians who believe that his divinity and his humanity mingled. Yeah. Right? I do not believe that. I believe that his divinity and his humanity were like that together. In other words, right, it's not like in one person and then you have, he, he, he could use his divinity when he wanted to mm. and use his, his humanity when he wanted to. Okay. He, he had it both possessed in, in him, but it wasn't mingled. Like if you put um, syrup in water and you, you shake it off. Okay. Right? So in other words, when he came down to earth, right, he took on humanity yeah and the reason why he took on humanity was because he wanted to show humanity what god was like sure right this is why it's um the, the gospel is really revelation one you know sure sure re revelation of jesus christ uh -huh. which really is what jesus came down to earth to, mm. to show you know the love of god and he couldn't do that in the form of Almighty God. Sure. He had to take on humanity. So if I'm if I'm not mistaken, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you you say that Jesus, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, mingled his divine and his human. No, 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 you don't you believe it's separate? Mingled, not, mingled. not mingled but separate. He had both his humanity correct. and okay. his divinity. Right. right. Now okay. Now, when you mentioned yeah. about Mark where he, he didn't know right yeah it was his humanity that didn't know but his divinity knew but do you believe okay but you agree a few moments ago you agreed with the definition yeah. that god is all-knowing that god is absolute in the sense that at any point in time god cannot be ignorant okay let, let me explain this now yeah. in order to save mankind he had to come down as a man and he had to go through all the problems that um, you or I would have to go through. Okay. So that he could then go up to the Father and say, Look, Lord, God the Father, I know what they have gone through. I know the feelings, right? So he couldn't have done that in his own, you know, in, in his divinity. He had to do that in his humanity. It's just like you saying, there's an Anthony flow, right? In comparison to you, you are greater than the ant. You want to communicate to the ant, so you have to become like an ant to communicate with that ant. You cannot communicate with an ant like that. Or an alien coming from outer space to, to, to us, right? 
their language will be different than ours. They have to become like us or they have to know or understand us. And this is what I'm basically saying here. When God came down, he had to take on humanity in order that he can show humanity that what he has gone through, all what he has gone through, we are able to go through it as long as we trust in God. But Larry, and this is why yeah. he says that I, I cannot do anything for yeah. um, for the Father. But Larry, if I was to, I, I get your point, thank you. Yeah. But Larry, if I was to, if, if we were to create a phone from scratch, for example, Let's say, for example, the phone is broken. Who would be able to recreate the phone? Okay, if we were to create a phone from scratch, whoever's created the phone must have the knowledge, correct? Does he need to be, does he need to be the phone to know how the phone functions? No, he doesn't. Because the, the, the person who created the phone must have the knowledge. Yeah, that's part of the prerequisite. So, for example, if I, was, if I want to create this camera, I don't need to be the camera. I have the ability to create this camera white because I have knowledge. Yeah, so God does not, God doesn't enter into his creation. God, since he is all knowing, he knows what is good and bad for us. So he doesn't need to enter his creation. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the Surah Qaf. Allah says, And we are closer to him than his juggler vein. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows. Why? Because since he is the creator, he knows what's good and bad for us. So he doesn't need to come in the form of man to, you know, to, to know you know the strengths and weaknesses no because God as the creator possesses the knowledge of his creation you, you understand that, you said that God doesn't need to end his creation no where, 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 does, where do you get that from because like for example I don't need if I created this phone uh, sorry if I created this camera right I don't need to enter into the camera to know how the camera works because whoever whoever created this camera must have the knowledge anyway so if someone destroys this camera who would be able to who would be able to recreate the camera? The one he created. He doesn't need to enter into the camera to know how the camera functions. Like this phone, for example. You know, there's an instruction manual, correct? So the one who created this phone, right? All the creator needs to do is send guidance, in, manual instruction with the phone, right? So similarly, Almighty God, he cannot be ignorant of his creation. And so by you, sorry, so by you postulating that God needs to take the form of a man, you are you are actually indirectly saying that God doesn't know his creation, no, which, are, which is diametrically opposed to what we both agree I'll that God you, is all knowing. I'll tell you why I believe that God has to come down as a man. If he, he has given us requirements in the word of God, right? right. Or we should leave, keep the commandments of God and so forth, right? Right. Now, if we say that we cannot keep it because we, we are all sinners, we cannot keep it, right? Right. It's impossible for us to keep it. He would then say, well, yeah, you can't keep it. But because he came down as a man and he showed that Jesus could keep the commandments of God as a man, then it is also possible as a man. But Jesus, peace be upon him, yeah, but Jesus, peace be upon him, also says that if you love me, keep the commandments. So Jesus is not saying to man, you know, you're not able to keep the commandments. That does not mean that Jesus, in fact, it doesn't even logically, it doesn't make sense that God, that you believe Jesus is God. Jesus is able to fulfill the commandments because commandments by definition means someone gives you instructions. No, God is the authority. So it doesn't make sense that you're saying Jesus is God, but yet Jesus is able to keep the commandments. But the commandments comes from who? God. From God, correct? But you're saying Jesus has to fulfill the commandments? That doesn't make sense. Rather, what that proves is Jesus was a creation of God, that Jesus submitted to the will of the Father. As it mentions in the Gospel of John, you chapter know? number five, verse number 30, Jesus says that I can of my own self do nothing as I hear a judge and my judgment is just for I seek not my own will but the will of my father is in heaven now imagine this you believe that Jesus is fully God and fully man Jesus is saying I can of my own self do nothing can you attribute this to the divine being no but you're taking that out of context there again because it says as a man that's what he has to say okay so what is the definition of God and what's the definition of man definition of God yeah, what's the yeah. definition of God that we agree? Is God Almighty infinite? He has no beginning, no end. Did Jesus have a beginning? Jesus did for, for, for um, his birth, but that was as a man. But you agree with me that God... Had, no, 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 yeah, no, no. Go you see, there again, you see, remember, right at the very start, yeah. I said that we have to agree on what the word one means. Right? I know. Right. 
Now, if we agree with that, when we say, when the, as Christians, I say, we say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, we know that there are three persons there. Yes. Right? But we don't say that there are three gods. I know, I know that. that that's right. the reason why I'm not making that, I'm not making straw man arguments. Right. What I'm saying is, you, you, you believe that there's three different persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three, these three are not three gods. These are, it's one God. That's what, that, that's according to your belief. Now, I want you to analyze what Jesus says here. You mentioned in John chapter 17, verse 3. Jesus, he prays for his believer that, O oh, Father, that this is life eternal, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, you have said. Now, now, let me ask you this question. When Jesus says the only true God is the Father, is Jesus including himself that he could be God? No. For example, if I say the only person in speaker's corner is Larry, can there be another Larry? Logically speaking, rationally speaking, no. Jesus is excluding himself from claiming that I'm not, the, I'm not the only true God. The only true God is the Father. So let me ask you this question. In your Trinitarian model, the Father is one person, the Son is one person, and the Holy Spirit is one person. Based upon the, 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 based upon the statement of Jesus that the only true God is the Father, who is the only, who is the only true God out of the three persons? Yes, I, I the three of them. Sorry? The three of them. No. L listen very carefully. No, no, no. Listen very. No, no, no. Listen very carefully. Larry, see, this is where, this is where the, this no, is Larry, where Larry. I, I li li listen, listen very carefully. In the beginning, it yeah. says, "In the beginning, God, right, Elohim." And as you know, okay, it's, it's in Hebrew. But Larry, I want you no, to. No, 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 no. Okay, no, go let me on. just finish. No. Elohim. Mm -hmm. Plural. It could also mean singular, right? But in the context, in in Genesis one, it is Elohim. It is plural. No. In the Hebrew, when they want to categorize a single to a plural, like for instance, a cat is a single, cats is plural, right? They will always put a I, I am on the end, which Elohim, cherubim, seraphim. That's a Hebrew way of saying it is plural. This is why you have the word Elohim. However, however, we're not, as much as I appreciate that you're going through the the meaning of Elohim. That's not. That's not what we're talking about. We're talk wait, wait, wait. Sorry, Larry. Larry, one second. We are going upon the statement of Jesus. Yeah. You believe that you follow Jesus, correct? So we should follow what Jesus says, correct? What did Jesus say in John chapter seventeen, verse three? He says that this is life eternal, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God, the only true God. By the way, if you look, wait, wait. Every version, whether it's the King James version or it's the New International Version, right? Every translation says the only true God is the Father and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now, I'm asking you a very simple question. That in the Trinitarian model, you believe that the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Spirit is a person. According to the statement of Jesus, who is the only true God of the three persons? You're taking John 17, 3 out of context. No, no, no. Just please answer the question. Because Jesus is... I, I by, by the way, I've read John's Gospel. I answered it, I answered it already. I what said is three it? of them and you don't agree with no, them. No, no, no. I'm saying based upon... Look, we agree. What does, what does only mean? Sorry? What does only mean? Only, the English term. No, no other but one. That's it. So what is Jesus saying on the other hand? There's no other God except the Father. But he's, he's directing the people to who they should be worshipping. Who should, they, who should they be worshipping? Yes. Who should they be worshipping? Which is who? He was a human being. No, 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 no. According to the context, who is he saying Jesus? Who, who, what is Jesus saying? He's saying the only true God that deserves to be worshipped is who? Himself or the Father? He's directing the people to the only true God. And, right? the, and, 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 the and Jesus... True, hold on, hold on. You're going on. The only true God is, is Father, Son, and no. Holy Spirit. That's not a conscious statement of Jesus. Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. No, Larry, if you open up, look, look, you can open up John chapter 17, verse 3. I'm giving you the, I'm giving you, I'm not pulling, I'm not pulling up a fast one. I'm quoting from your book. Yeah. Jesus says very clearly, the only true God, and he identifies. It's not as though Jesus is ambiguous. No, Jesus is being very specific. No, the only true God is who? The Father. So he's not being ambiguous. So the Holy he's, Spirit isn't God. According to Jesus, he the according Holy, to Jesus. The, the Holy Spirit isn't God. Let alone the Holy Spirit. Look here, Larry, let alone the Holy Spirit, Jesus himself excludes that I'm not God. The only true God is the Father. I just ask you a question. Is the Holy Spirit not God? I'm saying let alone the Holy Spirit, Jesus himself even re rejects that I'm not God. The only true God is the Father. Like for example, the example, if this person 
if he is the only person in speaker's corner, right? You got, you got wait, wait. Children, you got a family. Um, let's assume that you got a family. I'm not, you know, I you know. Let's assume, assuming you have a family, right? Okay, but and you have to come back to my point. Yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you come. To you. And your name, your your, your surname is um, Christian name is say whatever, John Smith or whatever. Okay. Right. Now you have children. Okay. You have children, right? And then there might be something. Smith or John, something, uh, uh, be a daughter, something, right. John, right? Uh -huh. No, if I was to stand away and I was, you had your children be in front of you and I say, John, come here. Okay. Right? All three of you would probably look at me and say, who, who, who are you referring to? I'd have to go to you, your, your, your surname, right? You know, I'll tell you why your analogy is flawed. I'll tell you, I'll tell you for why. For them to, you know. Yeah. My father. That's your family. Okay. You're all, you know, Josephs. Right? And I okay. said, Joseph, come here. Mm. All three of you would look at me. So are you right? saying the son is the so, father? So what I'm, what I'm saying is that when we use the word God, right? God Almighty, we're referring to the, the position that he's in at the time, right? They all have a role to play. The Holy Spirit convicts, convicts people of sin, right? Jesus came down to show what God was like and demonstrate how we should live okay. as a human being, right? And if the Father is up there, he's the, he's the one that is up there presiding over everything. Okay, but Larry, I'll tell you why your analogy is flawed about, you know, the, uh, you have children and you have more than one Joseph. And you say, which John or which Joseph you mentioned, right? But Jesus, he's not ambiguous. Jesus is specifically saying the only true God is the Father. And you don't believe that the, the Son can be the Father, correct? Do you believe the Son is the Father? No. So the, where's the confusion? Jesus, he's making very clear that the only true God is the Father. And the Son can never be the Father. Why? Otherwise you fall into modelism. Well, if I said you do you understand? Could, do I believe that you could be you? You'd say no, but, but there's still two of you there. I, I agree with you. Still have the but, same but, who, but who is Jesus saying the only true God? Is it ambiguous or unambiguous? Is it clear or ambiguous in that statement that it Jesus made? Clear. Right. So clear is the Father. So who else is the Father in the Trinity? The Son or the Holy Spirit? Yeah, God. Right. So He's been very clear. The yeah. Father is the only true God. But then the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How could you say? No, no. You're not getting the point, Larry. You're saying that you know the the term God. You're saying it, there's a possibility it could, it, that it's referring to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, correct? You gave me the example of, you know, uh, you have a, a children and you named all of them John. So which John are you talking about? This is what you're saying. So if I said to you, so, so, wait, 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 Larry, Larry, one second. Who is the true John? Right, but, who's the, who's but the you, true John? Right. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, if go I on. If I said on. to you, who is the, the true John out of you three? Right? So the others are false Johns. No, they're not. <laughs> that's they're not. what I'm saying. That's look, the look. point. That's the point. No, Larry, see, Larry. No, no, no. That's the La point. La Larry, Larry, because Larry. Because they're all Johns, right? In other words, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But is there confusion? Okay, wait, Larry, 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 where is the confusion? Wait, 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 where is the confusion that Jesus is saying the only true God is the Father? Where is the confusion? He's making very clear. Look, you know who the Father is, correct? And I'm making it very Larry, clear. Larry, 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 but your example is, is not, is, is, is unclear. No, you're you're saying which John, which John? No, 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 Jesus is saying, no, the only true God is the Father. Right, so you know who the Father is, correct? You know who the Son is. You know the Holy Spirit is. So who is Jesus referring as the only true God? The Father. The Father. Yes. So the Son cannot be God. The Holy Spirit cannot be God. The only true God is the Father. What's the confusion? You're contradicting yourself. I'm not contradicting. Yes, because you say I just clearly said right, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right? No, that's they your all belief. Possess, they all possess. No, Larry, that's your belief, but the evidence right. contradicts your belief. It, doesn't, it, doesn't. it does. Look. Look, look, look. Jesus in many of the, okay, the when, says when Jesus says the only true God, equal with, with, with the Father. Larry, Larry, when Jesus says the only true God is the Father, yeah. do you know who the Father is? Is it confusion? The first person of the Trinity. Right, who is the Father? Who is the Son? Let's see, uh, who is the Son in the Trinitarian model? Yeah, Jesus. Right, so that's very clear. Who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Right, the Holy Spirit. And who is the Father? The Father. The Father. 
who is the father? Like, can you explain to me? In that Trinity, in that Trinitarian model, the first person. Yeah, the first person. One, two, three, but who, but who is? So if I said yeah. The father, yeah. the son, and the Holy Spirit. There's three. No, 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 no. Just because we use the word father. Larry, 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 Larry. I'm talking about the nature of the father. That you know, that, look, look. You can identify to me who is the son in the Trinitarian model, correct? Yes. Who is it? No, no, I'm asking you the son. Can you identify to me who is the son? Jesus. Jesus, correct. So there's no confusion. And you know who the Holy Spirit is. And you know who the father is. So Jesus is not confusing which God is referring to. Jesus is saying the only true God is who? The father. Not the son, not the Holy Spirit, the father. Sorry, I can have one discussion at a time. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Correct. Thank if you read, if you read in John chapter 17, verse 21 to 23, what did Jesus pray? He said, I pray that all of you are one, just like I and the Father are one. Does that mean you're does that mean you're part of the Trinity? You're part of God? No. no so what is no, Jesus no, no, no. saying? The, the word there is different. You see, no, it's the, not, it's hen. One, hen. Right? That in the Greek, in unity, it's talking there about unity, just right. like the Father, unity, Son, unity, and Holy Spirit good, is good. in unity. Right. So unity in essence or unity in purpose? In purpose and Correct. So when Jesus prays in John chapter 17, verse 23, that my believers, they may be one in me, just like I and the Father are one. Does that make you part of God? Do you possess the essence? Exactly. So when Jesus says, I and the Father are one, if you read the preceding verses, did Jesus, the, obviously the, the, the Jews, they say that you are a mere man, you claim to be equal with God, correct? Did Jesus say afterwards, yes, you're correct, I'm equal with God? No, Jesus, he quotes from Psalms chapter 82, verse 6, that is it not mentioned in your law, that I said you are God's Elohim. And where is the room for blasphemy that I am claimed to be God's son? So Jesus, peace be upon him, he is negating the claim of divinity. That like, look, you Jews, you misunderstood me. I didn't claim here to be God. If you have a problem that you are called as Elohim, then you don't claim to be God. Well, By the way, saying, the word... Why, why are you saying that he didn't come here to claim to be God? The, the, the Bible is full of him claiming to be God. But Larry, I'm, making, I'm giving the context. No. If you, look, look, if you disagree with the context, you can refute. Jesus says very clearly, why is he quoting from Psalms 82 verse 6? To make a point that, look, I'm not claiming to be God. You are also called Elohim. Just because you're called Elohim, that does not make you divine. Why? Because if you read in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, that Moses was, was made as Elohim to Pharaoh. Does that make Moses God? No. So Jesus is saying that, look, because I'm making the statement, I and the Father are one, that does not mean that I have the same essence. He's showing the unity in purpose. Just like Jesus prays in John chapter 70 verse 21, that I pray that all the believers in me may be one with me, just like I am one with the father so if so let's so let's talk about the consistency if jesus makes prayer for the believers that he that they may be in one with me that means you're saying that you have a share of essence with god and you don't believe in that and by the way if you're talking about different use of the greek term i've checked the greek term the greek term used for one is hen which is very consistent john chapter 17 verse 3 john chapter 17 verse 21 it's not different words same word hen which means not unity in essence Unity in purpose. So okay. Jesus, so Jesus, I, I agree there purpose, you agree. Yeah. So Jesus, peace be upon him. He says the only true God is the Father. That means by 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 definition, by his statement, Jesus is excluding himself. That, and, and by the way, Jesus had the opportunity to say that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are three. These three are one. There's not a single statement from Jesus. There's not a single statement in the Bible that has the belief of Trinity. It doesn't. It doesn't. Not a single. No, when you say there's not a single state of, um, statement no. in oh, exactly. that says that there's a trinity. Yes. You know, I, could, I could show you quite a lot. Show me. Right in Genesis alone, you know, there the, the, the is why don't Why don't the Jews believe there that is, there's trinity? Sorry? Why don't the Jews... The, okay, who is more proficient in the Old the, Testament, the, the Jews or Christians? Because the Jews don't accept Jesus. I know that, but do you, know, do you know why? That's why? Look, look, it mentioned very clearly in Deuteronomy, chapter 32 verse 39 it says that there is no God with me there is no God with me and who is me here God the father 
No, no, no. That's yes, vegan. the father. No, you say the father. Where does it the say father. there's no God with the father? Okay, okay. Do Where you, does it say that? Do you, you okay. This is what I'm saying. Right. You're taking things out of the context. No, I'm not. No, yes, you are. Because what you have to do, right, when you have a text, right, that says one thing, and a text that says another, yeah. right, which is you're using the other, right, you have to then explain the text that says one thing. And you're not doing that. When I say, let's say Genesis. Sure. Right? Sure. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so I, you believe Jesus use, created the heavens and the earth? I use the word, the Hebrew thing. Okay. And it says, okay. and then in verse 26, it says, and let, let us mind make our own image. Right. Then you have to say, well, who is the us? No problem. Who is the us? Uh, uh, for this, I'm going to use the concordance approach. Yeah. Meaning I agree for the sake of argument. That, you know, there is no God with me. Me here refers to Trinity. No problem. Mm. So do you believe Jesus has a part in the creation? Can you have more than one absolute being? No. But you, one so you believe being. that the, so you believe that the father no, the fa so you believe that the father, the son, and holy spirit, they share in the creation. So that by definition, by definition, God is absolute. But, but you know that proves to you. That proves to you that God is not all powerful. Because they have to share the powers. So you cannot have one. You, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Larry, Larry. Larry, let me complete. Do you believe God is all all right, do you believe God is all powerful? <laughs> Huh? Do you believe God is all powerful? All all powerful. A L S. Right. What does all powerful mean? You could do anything. No, that's not what it means. All powerful meaning this 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 being has all the powers. No one else shares the power. That's what all powerful means. Now, from your Trinitarian model, you believe that Jesus created the uh, the, the heavens and the earth as well, correct? Yes. The Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. So by so. So if you believe that, that God is all powerful and that God does not share his powers to anyone in the creation, that means you're contradicting because you also believe that Jesus was, was playing in the part of the creation. So that means you actually believe that the Father shares some of his powers with the Son and the Son shares some of his powers with the Holy Spirit. That's what you're saying. Three of them, three of them in Genesis, if you look at it, okay. right, created everything. No problem. So what? How are they sharing? So Larry, how are they sharing? They, I'll tell you why. Because what you're telling me, what you're telling me, you're telling me there's a possibility of more than one being who created the universe. That's what you're telling me. No, no, you, no, no. You mentioned that. No, you mentioned the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They all played a part in the creation. That's what you believe, correct? So can you have more than one absolute being? No. So who? So, so therefore, by definition, there can only be one entity that created the universe there cannot be more than one because the moment you say the moment you say that god is all powerful so when we use the one we, we're talking about one as in being right we're not talking about one as in three beings we're not, I'm not using it in that no no i'm not saying you believe in three beings yeah. what i'm saying is that god is the creator of the heavens and the earth correct we agree on that yeah. however you have a different understanding of god you believe that jesus also plays a part in the creation correct Okay, but you believe that God is all powerful. God meaning absolute. What does absolute mean? Absolute meaning no one else shares the essence. Okay, do you agree with that definition? Okay, but you also, but, but however, that contradicts the belief that Jesus also plays a part in the creation because he has to share the powers with the Father. You just said one essence, right? So how could you share so do you believe so do you believe God shares his essence no. but Jesus but you believe Jesus is a, is a separate person from the father you believe Jesus is a separate person from the father it came down as the son. no 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 Larry 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 look no no they cannot be no no when they're separate right yeah yeah right they it's no longer a being it's persons so Larry if it's if for persons. example so Larry I'll give you an example you know in speaker's corner right now it's nice and sunny right Nice and sunny. Imagine you have God A. God A says, look, I, I want rain in Speaker's Corner. The other God says, no, I want Speaker's Corner to be sunny. What does that show you? There's a conflict of will. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. There's no God A and there's no God so, so, and wait, Hang on, but do you believe... No, 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 no. Larry, 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 let, let me complete. Larry, do you believe God is independent? Yes. Meaning that, independent meaning that he doesn't... Uh, he doesn't depend on any of existence for his own. Do you agree with that? Okay. Did the, the, do you believe that the son proceeds from the father? 
Meaning begetted. You believe that Je Jesus is the begotten Son of God. That's part of your belief. Yeah, but I've got to be okay, generated. Because generated. Proceeds. So, ca so can the Son exist not, without not, the Father? Not like that La born like. No, Larry, Larry, look. I know the word begotten. I'll, I'll people, clarify. People I'll, make... I'll clarify what I mean, proceed. Yeah. Can the Son exist without the existence of the Father? Can the Father exist without the existence of the Son? So who is dependent and who is independent? They're not dependent on anyone. Look, listen, listen very carefully. They're not dependent on anyone. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to ask you again. Can the Son exist without the Father? I just said no. Can the Father exist without the Son? I said no. Right. So who is showing dependency here? The Father or the Son? Do you know what dependency means? What does dependency mean? Depending on somebody else. Right. So does the father depend upon the son for his existence? No. But does the son depend upon the father for his existence? No. You just contradict yourself. Because you mentioned that the son... Because you say the son proceeds from the father. That's your belief. So the moment no, you... No, no, no. When yeah. did I say that the son proceeds from so the father? So you don't believe the son proceeds from the father? No. So when, so, when, so when Jesus is the begotten son of God, what do you understand by the term begotten? Not, not as in created or born or anything like that, because Jesus was self-existent just like the Father was. You so self-existent like the Father. Yes. Okay. From eternity. Right. So you can have. So 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 that means that means according to your belief, God is not absolute. He doesn't have all powerful. That shows dependency. Because you're saying that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they all play in the role of the creation. That only proves dependency. If, for example, look, look, us four here, we want to create this camera, right? Wait, 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 one second, one, one second, one second. Look, I want, I want to give this example just to appreciate. There's, there's four of us, and we want to create this camera here. Does that show that we depend upon each other for the creation? Think about it, think about it very carefully. I cannot, I cannot create without your input. You cannot create without his input. He cannot create without his input. Does that show independency or dependency? Can I create... So, all four of us, we share in the creation of this camera, this tripod here. Does that show that... that it, does that show we are dependent upon each other? That shows dependency upon each other. So when the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, when you believe that they all played a part in the creation, that means that they depend upon each other. Think about it. I want you to think very deeply. But you, you're thinking in human sense, you're not thinking in the godly sense. Of okay. Oh God. No, I, no, no, no. You, you're go on, go on, Nari. No. In humanity sense, you know, we have in um, finite mind. I mean, in, God is infinite and we have finite mind. So we, 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 you know, we don't think the way that God thinks. Okay, Larry. There's something called universal knowledge. Yeah. Universal knowledge meaning everyone knows certain things. So we know based upon our universal knowledge that God is independent. Do you agree with that? God doesn't need anyone's help. Whether in his creation, okay? Do you agree with that? Now, based upon that universal knowledge, we rationalize. We rationalize about God. I know there's certain things that we don't know about God. Yeah? That's his ontological existence. We don't know how God looks like, yeah? I'm not, I'm, we're not delving into what we do not know. We're delving into what we already know about God. So we know that God is independent, correct? Yeah, so he doesn't depend on any, anything else for his existence. Or, or he doesn't depend upon anything for his action. Like if he wants to create, he doesn't depend on anyone else. Do you agree with that? Now, in your Trinitarian model, do you believe that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, they all played a part in the creation? Just like, for example, here, the four of us. Right. Just like all four of us here. And, and hold on. Yeah. I don't believe that. I believe what the Bible says, and the Bible says that. No, but you were, you agreed with me based upon yes, universal I, knowledge. I, I, just that as I said, when I say I, it's not me that believe it. It's the Bible that says it, and so I believe what the Bible says. But hang up. But, but hang the Bible says that yeah. three of them were involved in creation, and that's what I believe. The Bible says. But it. Larry, do you not see that you're following what you call contradiction? Because you, I, I tell you what, I tell you what. Look, I'm not even talking about Islam here. We're just talking about the concept of God, based upon our universal knowledge, based upon what we already know about God. That God, whoever created this universe, has to be all-powerful, has to be all-knowing, has to be independent. Do you agree with that? Yeah? So no revelation. I'm not even talking about the Quran. Have I mentioned anything about the Quran? Have I mentioned anything about the Bible apart from the fact it shows Jesus' humanity? No. We're just talking about what we already know about God. 
yeah, based upon the first principles. Now that we know that based upon universal knowledge, God is independent. We just know. Okay? Independent meaning that he doesn't need anything else for his existence as well as carrying his act of creation. Do you agree with that? So he doesn't need anyone's help to create. Now, based upon that universal agreement, you agree with that by that definition. You believe that the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they all played a part in the creation. Do you agree with that? Okay. Just like for example, all four of us, we depend upon each other to create this camera. Does that show dependency or independency? You see again, you, you're not getting the point because you know, you're, you're splitting the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and you're using the same principle as you, you, and you. No, you're using the same no, no, principle. No, 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 no. And you're saying that for you three to create that, you need to be independent. Um, sorry, you need each other. But doesn't that show we're dependent? Right. If there's yeah, more, God, if, yeah. God isn't, see, that shows dependency. This is what I'm saying. God is one. No, no. Right? So, no, 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 we already agree, no, 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 what I'm saying is, we already agree that God is one, but your logical conclusion doesn't actually believe, you don't actually believe God, for example, someone say 2 plus 2 equals to 4, right, everyone knows that's a fact, but you know when you ask them why do you believe 2 plus 2 equals to 4, you start to realise, well actually your logical explanation doesn't lead to 4, it leads to 5, it leads to 6, that's what I'm trying to demonstrate to you, because God by definition, he's independent, but yet, in your Trinitarian belief, you believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they all played a part in the creation. Like for all four of us, I, we cannot create this camera if we don't depend on each other. That's how you are applying to the concept of Trinity, that the Father needs... The, the Father the needs... Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were dependent on each other. But just because I said three of them What does that show you? In, in, no, it does not say, it does not say that you're, you're putting a human term on God. No, 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 hang on. Okay, who do you believe? Who comes first, the Father or the Son? Sorry? Who comes first in existence? The Father or the Son? Neither of them, they, God. So they all existed at one point? Yes. Okay, what does the term Son and what does the term Father mean? By language, who comes first, the Father or the Son? Just imagine someone say, just imagine, just imagine someone say, just imagine someone say, just imagine someone say, I existed before my Father. Wait, wait, Larry. Just look, look, for example, someone comes to Speaker's Corner, right? And they say, I existed before my Father. What would you say? This guy needs to go to a mental asylum. Right, right. So when you use the term Father and when you use the term Son, it has its connotation. You're actually saying that the Son proceeded from the Father. The Son cannot exist without the Father. Sorry, the son, yeah, exactly. The son cannot exist without the father. That's what you're saying. Again, you're using a human term again, like father and son, which I know a father comes before the son. But according to your belief, otherwise you're going to, otherwise you're going to come. But using that same but, but, principle. But Larry, God, but Larry, you're going to fall into heresy. I'll tell you why. Because do you agree that the son proceeds from the father? This is all, all Christians believe in that. This is part of your creed, the Athanasian creed, that Jesus is the begotten son of God. Yeah, but not in the same way as a human. And it precedes, okay, it so are you are you telling me are you I telling me understand it in that way, but it's not that way. Do you know okay, but Larry with God. But Larry, the usage of the term is very important. Very important. I'm not asking you how the son exists before the father. I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you the term son indicates that the son cannot exist without the father. Every Christian believes in that, that the son proceeds from the father. The moment you use the word proceed, this is all Christians. All Christians use the term proceed or generated, right? The moment preceding, what does proceed mean? That means at one point, that entity did not exist. So by you saying that the son proceeds from the father, at one point the son did not exist. And you know what that shows you? That shows you there's a conflict, there's a, con there's a contradiction. Look, look at, the, look at the, the, the concept of God in Islam. It's so, like someone who's a university professor, and a man and a shepherd in the farm can understand that Allah is one and only. I don't have a that, problem with what you're saying there. Okay, but okay. I, I do have a problem with work when you, 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 you categorize the same principle as a human father and his son. His son I'm not talking about human father. I'm talking about, no, no, I'm not saying, look, we also believe that God is unlike his creation. Laysa kamithi hishayn. There is nothing like unto him. Wahu was samil basir. And he is all hearing, all seeing. I agree with you. I agree with you that, you know, the, 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 that we cannot attribute the same qualities and attributes to the creation. We cannot do that to God. I agree. But the terminology is very important because the sun, 
Everyone understand what the sun means. Everyone knows. Okay, someone from university professor would know what sun means. A, a, a shepherd from a farm would know what the sun means. So it's not it's not confusing. The moment someone says you're the son, that means, okay, you're, you're dependent upon the father. That's it. So what I'm advising you, that look, go back to whom Jesus worshipped. Jesus worshipped the father. Do you agree with that? Did the, did the, did the father ever worship the son? Jesus, yes, I agree that Jesus worshipped the father as a man. Okay, but did the father ever worship Jesus? No, he didn't need to. So who deserves to be worshipped? No, no. <laughs> Now, Larry, 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 think about this, think about this. Larry, Larry, think about this. Allah, do you know, in reality, you don't believe in one. You believe in a family of God. That's what you believe. Because you're no different from Hinduism. Hinduism, they, they, they have a concept called uh, Trimurti. Uh, they believe that there's three, there's three, person, uh, three gods, but they believe in one God. All Hindus, they say that. They all say that the main God is Brahma, but they believe in more than one God. The difference is they can see that they're polytheists. But the Christians, you don't consider that you're actually a polytheist. I'm sorry to say. Because in reality, you don't believe there is one God. You associate partners with God. You associate partners with the one who deserves to be worshipped. Okay, let me ask you this question. Who is giving you, who, who's keeping you alive right now? God. When Jesus, when he was on earth, who kept him alive? So who deserves to be worshipped? No, no, no. Just like we are. Wait, wait, wait. But Jesus, okay, okay. What is it? Okay. So Je look, Jesus as a human being, yeah. do you believe he was limited? Sorry? Do you believe he had limited knowledge? Yes. But do you believe that God is all knowing? In his humanity. That's not no, the question. No, no, no. no. Larry, 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 do you agree with me that yeah. God cannot be ignorant at any point in time? At, at any point in time, God cannot be ignorant. Okay, but Jesus, even 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 in his even in even in his human nature, at one point Jesus wasn't all knowing. So, by, so according to your definition, Jesus was not. No, Larry, Larry, Larry. Okay, one more thing before I go. Right, what is the definition of triangle? What is the definition of triangle? Triangle. You know the shape of triangle. What's the definition? What is the definition of a triangle? Equal sides. That's it. Three sided. Can the triangle can the triangle ever be four sided? Think about it. I want you to think. If I was to say, can the triangle at any point can it be four sided? Why? Because it's three. Because triangle by definition is three sided. There's inherent characteristics. Sorry. Oh, I'll. I'll I'll advertise it, don't worry. I don't get why you're trying to get it. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because the definition of triangle means three-sided, correct? Can the triangle ever be four-sided? Why? The triangle has three sides. Because it's inherent characteristics. Because it, 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 because it has inherent characteristics three-sided. So the triangle can... It, because if the triangle becomes four-sided, it's no longer a triangle. It becomes square. Similarly, when it comes to God, God, by definition, he's self-sufficient. No, 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 look, look, look. No, 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 Larry, Larry, that's based upon the universal knowledge. You know that. You know God, by definition, is independent. Right, so what does independent mean? No, no, hold on, hold on. If God is all-powerful, if he wanted to be a triangle with a free side, right, and he wanted to make it a four-sided, he could do it because he's all-powerful. So that means, that that means, that. so that means, at one point in time, He's not, he's not all-knowing then. Where you get that from? Because you said Jesus, peace be upon him, when he came in, 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 in human age, according you to you. you said so you believe Jesus was all-knowing as a human? I told you he wasn't. As so, a human being, Right, he wasn't so all at the same, all right, but you believe Jesus is God, correct? So can God be all-knowing and not all-knowing at the same time? Can Jesus be all-knowing all -knowing? All -knowing and not all-knowing at the same time? But Jesus is saying, I don't know the hour. Only the Father knows the hour. What does that show you? Because he's a man. But you believe God can never be ignorant. But you believe that God cannot be ignorant at any point in time. Jesus, where is Jesus now? 
No, that's no, 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 that's not. No, Larry, 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 it's like, Larry. No, no, no. I want to. No, Larry. I want you to stick. To, I want you to stick to the point because because it's like it's like I'm asking you what's your name and you say Sunday. So let's stick to the point. Can Jesus be all knowing as God? You believe Jesus is God. So God, by definition, is all knowing. Correct. All knowing meaning he knows everything. He cannot be ignorant at any point in time. Yeah. So even in his human form, what, did Jesus know the hour? No, definitely not. He said only the Father knows the hour. In the no, human... No, 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 but the word know, right? Come on, how, we all know what how, knowledge how would, means. No, no, how would... Look, even Paul, right, when he says, I know nothing but Christ, right? It doesn't mean that he didn't know anything else. Just right. because he used the word in that sense. I know where you're going to go to. Go on, go on, go, right. go ahead. You know, go ahead. I'm, I'm saying here yeah, that when Jesus went back to heaven... So nobody understands what knowledge means, except Paul. No, except Paul. No. Right, so we all know what knowledge means. The word knowing, what does knowing I, mean? I just told you. What does it mean? If I said no, knowing something, I know something about something. No, that's not definite. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm asking you, everyone knows what knowledge means. Right? It's not ambiguous. Everyone knows what knowledge means, yeah? You possess, you know, certain information and facts, correct? So, can God be ignorant at any point in time? Yes or no? When Jesus came as a human form and he was God at the same time, you believe he was God even in the human form? Was he all knowing? His humanity side. Right, his humanity side was not all knowing? His divinity side, yes, he knew. Where does he say that? Where does he say that? Where does he say that? Where does he say from his divine side he knows? He knows the hour. He's all knowing. Can you show me? He doesn't have to say that. See, this. So, so, I just said that God, right, knows everything. So why do I have to say? Where does he say that? But Je God knows okay, everything. but but he but humanity. but Larry, you just conceded that Jesus no, no, in his no, 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 no Larry, you just no no Larry, you just said Jesus in his human form is not all knowing. But you believe that God, by definition, is all knowing, and you agree with me that God, by his nature, cannot be ignorant at any point in time. So what I'm telling you is that, look, what you're telling me is that your belief. No problem. I, I, I cannot, you're entitled to your own belief. But your logical conclusion actually contradicts your belief. And, I, and after this discussion, I really, I really want you to analyze and see where is the consistency. And this is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, almighty God, He is perfect at all times. Allah says, Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَادٌ says he's Allah one, one and unique. Nobody, no, nobody's confused. Allah who summoned, Allah the independent, self-sufficient. Lam yalid wa lam yulad, he begets and already begotten. Wa lam yakullu wa kufar, there's nothing like unto him. You see Islam, the beauty about Islam is, Islam aligns to your sound reasoning, intellect, as well as your natural inclination. It aligns. And this is the beauty about Islam. And that's the reason why Christianity with all due respect, I'm sorry to say this, it conflicts your natural inclination about God, it conflicts with your sound intellect. Just, I, 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 I believe, I'm not even talking about the Bible. Who's talking about the Bible here? I'm talking, I'm talking about the nature of God that both of, both of us agree upon. That the nature of God is God is all-knowing. He cannot be ignorant at any point in time. But from your belief, it leads to a logical contradiction. Which is because you just conceded that Jesus. No, I, no, 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 no. Yes, See, you misunderstood, yes. Larry. Based upon the universal knowledge, based upon what everyone knows, everyone knows that God is all knowing. Yeah? You don't need to be taught about that. So, based upon the universal. Right. So, based upon the universal knowledge that we all know, we have to rationalize. No person can ever rationalize to me that God can be ignorant at any point in time. Otherwise, He's not all knowing. So I'm not talking about things that we don't know about God. I'm talking about things that we already know about God. But your belief leads to logical contradiction. God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's Al-Aleem, He's all-knowing. He cannot be ignorant at any point in time. Allah is as samad meaning He's, he's self-sufficient. At one point in time, he, he doesn't require to eat or drink. Do you agree with that? Does God require to eat or drink? He doesn't. You, you just said that, right? God cannot be ignorant at any time. Yeah. Right? Yes. When Jesus was on the earth, yes. his divinity knew everything. Where did he so say that? Everything. Where? Where did he say that? His humanity, it didn't. Show me. So, so, so it's not contradicting anything. Larry, Larry, Larry. He's ignorant. Larry, when Jesus made the statement, when, Larry, when Jesus made the statement, 
that only the Father knows the hour. Was it, was it in, in human nature or his divine nature? Just in his human nature. Right, can you show me evidence from his divine nature that he knows? He knows everything. You see, what the problem is, you're going by what the church teaches you, you but it contradicts with the statement no, of Jesus. You say, show me evidence of his divine nature that he knew everything. I just told you. Well, what is it? God. No, no. In his no. divinity. Larry, this is called circular reasoning. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's like, that's like, that's like, that's like asking me, that's like asking me, why do you believe Islam is true? I say because the Quran is the word of God. This is circular reasoning. You have to prove to me, where did Jesus from his divine side knows the hour? Can you show me anywhere? You can't. It only shows Jesus in his human form. That's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, powerful argument. Allah says in chapter 5 verse 75 that look at the Messiah and his mother. They both used to eat and we made the signs clear to them yet they turn away. What does that show, what does that show you? That only shows the humanity of Jesus. It doesn't show the divinity. You cannot be self-sufficient and at the same time you have to eat and drink to keep yourself alive. It's, it's, it's illogical, it's impossible. But I think we have to agree to disagree. But look, <laughs> is it, uh, my name is Raihan. Sorry? Raihan. 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 And you're Larry, yeah? Larry, yeah. Nice to meet you. Look, nice if I, look, <laughs> look, look, I hope we had a mutual discussion. Um, if, I, if I offended you, I apologize. No, no, That's no, not no, my intention. Me, yeah. But we just, we just come here to establish, you know, using you know, evidence rather than just belief. Like, you have to back your belief with evidence. I, I believe in that. You have to. Because but you can't be a blind follower. You have to go based upon the evidence. That's why I asked you, where did Jesus say from his divine side that he's all knowing? There's no evidence. Where's the evidence of the Trinity? You're asking there is a question that the Bible doesn't um, say because in his humanity, I'm knowing my new, um, divinity, I will show you evidence that I know everything. He couldn't so, when was it, so when was he divine? No, no, no. When, when, Sorry, Larry, when was he divine? Huh? When was he divine? When was Jesus divine? Where, did he show his divine qualities? Yes. Where? There, there were times when he done things, right? Okay. Um, miracles okay. that shows his, his divinity. Right. You know. Okay. So let's. Okay. Do you know the story of uh, Lazarus? Yeah. Lazarus was dead, correct? Days in the grave, yeah. Right. Did Jesus perform miracle of bringing Lazarus back from the dead by his own uh, authority? Or by God's permission, by the Father's permission. Through, through God, yeah. The Father. Yeah. What did Jesus say? He said, Father, I know you hear me. I know that you always hear me. Yeah. Now prayer, no, what does prayer, prayer signify? Yeah. Prayer signifies you're needy. Yeah. You're, 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 you need assistance. So, but you mentioned, you mentioned that Jesus' divinity, he performed miracles. But actually, Jesus is saying, I cannot perform miracles except by the Father's permission. No, no, no. Makes sense. I, I said, no, I said it again, right? That should teach you something, right? That about Lazarus, right? It showed. Others said that like, he showed. Jesus came to show us how we, right, should interact. You, me, anyone, we can do exactly what Jesus done, raise the dead. But it is, is in through Christ, and He has shown that demonstration. What did what, by uh, praying to good. the Father and saying, "Thank you." You have heard my prayer. Right. right? So and Jesus didn't perform miracles by his own admission. No, exactly. he did it. Right. So what does that show you? That doesn't show his divinity. No, that no, shows no. he was dependent. He was dependent upon the Father. So look, look, look. Look, it mentioned in Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Wait, Peter, what did Peter say in Acts chapter 2, verse 22? He says, Hear, O Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, a man, a man approved of God by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him and you are witness to it what is peter saying here did peter say jesus was god and he performed miracles no he said jesus was a man approved by god by wonders and miracles and signs which god did by him and you are witness to it how else would he have said that uh, sorry how else would he have said that a man approved of god what does that show you about jesus no no it just shows that he was man on earth yeah. That's all it shows. Yeah, and, and which, but which is what no, the no, Bible says. no, no. Your original statement was Jesus shows his divinity by performing miracles. You just said that. You just said Jesus shows his divinity by performing miracles. Yeah. I just showed to you that Peter is saying he was a man approved by God, and God is not a man. In your own Old Testament, it says that God is not a man, very clearly. So I think we just have to, we just have to end the discussion here. Thank but you. you know what? I, I really appreciate you. you're a very nice, very nice individual. And um, if I look, like I said, if I 
if I offended you, you know, I apologize. That's not my intention. We just have to come in here to have a good discussion, and I, I, I hope that you also like reciprocate the same way. Okay, yeah. Nice to meet you, Larry. Man. Nice. Take care. Okay. God bless you.